Yo guys, what is up? Fly here. Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the new Q&A with the developer BVV underscore D about the new things that are going to be added in 1.59 and new things that will be added in the foreseeable future. Now, just a small disclaimer is that even though in this list it might say it's coming out in 1.59, doesn't mean that. This is just some short talk with a developer who was nice enough to answer some questions. So we got some pretty cool remarks that we're gonna talk about today. So how this video is gonna work is that we're gonna go over whatever I think is cool to talk about, uh, but the link to this list will be in the description below for you guys to check out. But all right, let's go ahead and get started with number one. BVV underscore D says that ATGM vehicles are planned for every ground force tree in the game and most certainly in the same patch. So what that means is that uh, every nation is getting ATGMs and when that does happen, um, we'll have them on the same patch. It doesn't look like anything will be done this patch about it because you know normally they would say coming out this patch stay tuned but in my video where we talked about different nations ATGMs it looks like already once confirmed for this patch the M551 Sheridan uh, that one has a, um, a gun launch system or pretty much can fire a conventional round out of the gun or a missile uh, for the Russians, it's the IT-1. Uh, for the Germans, it's the Jaguar II, that one that was modified in 1983. And for the British, I'm pretty sure we're going to be having the swing fire. That thing is beautiful. Now, they go on and talk about repair costs, um, blah, blah, blah. Stuff is interesting, uh, but they kind of deflect the questions as uh, not promised, can't confirm that stuff. But what they are planning and what they did kind of confirm for 1.61 is that they are planning on adding a bunch of top tier tanks for every nation in the game, most certainly in 1.61. So what I think they're going to do is that they're not going to be adding, you know, 19 different tanks to the top tier tank tree. What they're going to be doing is adding different variations of already existing tanks there. Uh, for an example, we have the Russians with gosh darn, I don't know how many T-34s they have, but they have a ton. Uh, but at the top tier level, they have three T-54s. So I think they're going to be adding different variations of, let's say, an M60 to the mix. So if you die, not to worry, you can just respawn in a different variation of the M60 and still have some of the same fighting capabilities as you did with the first one. But maybe I'm entirely wrong. They might be adding a ton of new prototype paper tanks to the tech tree. We'll just have to wait and find out. Next up is the M551 Sheridan. Now we already kind of talked about this in the section about ATGMs being added for every nation, but this just has a little bit more information about um, BVV says will be in light tank tree tier five will have ATGMs in high explosive heat shells. So it doesn't seem like any heat fin stabilized for this tank, but holy shit, imagine a heat fin stabilized for a 152 millimeter barrel. Uh, also, they state it won't swim at least now. And they say mainly because in real life it could either shoot or swim. So what that means in simple terms is that if you're trying to cross the lake on, let's say, Poland, you won't be able to use your gun until you reach the other side. So it sounds like they are debating on whether to keep that feature in the game or maybe allow you to shoot and sail at the same time. Good, so we got that stuff out of the way. Uh, but from this point on, you might want to tape your mouth to jaw to keep it attached. Uh, this is confirmed. We have the Stuart, the Stuart Emil. I used to call it Saint Emil. Whatever you call it, we know what you mean. This is confirmed into 1.59 tier 4 TD, minus 15 depression for the main gun, like the Dicker Max. Uh, it is, again, confirmed to come out this patch. BVV underscore D says, and I quote, it will have the most powerful gun in the game and i guess this gun has its own nickname or name uh please forgive me if i mispronounce that please please guys please i just beg you jules vice or as google fucking translate says here 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 take it i don't want this name jules vice uh, all right good so we got that out of the way this is crazy most powerful gun for the Stuart emil Stuart, whatever I'll, i'm gonna call it Stuart. 
Now, we're speculating that this will be a tier 4 vehicle, but with the most powerful gun in game, I don't see a reason why this thing couldn't be tier 5. Now, this gun is 128 millimeters in diameter, 60 calibers long, so that, god, man, that is a fucking hell of a gun, man. Also, the uh, the Stuart Emil will be faster than the Dicker Max, so we have that going for you. We have a depressing gun as the 105, you have a bigger gun than the 105, and you have a faster tank or TD uh, or open the convertible in general than the Dicker Max. Okay, diving deeper into this Q&A, uh, just keep in mind, as said before, it gets crazier and crazier. Uh, so the next subject is Antos. Now, I've never ever heard of Antos at all, so I had to type it in. And you know, I thought I would find something cool, but holy shit, did I find something amazing. This is the M50 Antos, which was a light armored track anti-tank vehicle developed in the 1950s. It had six M40 106 millimeter recoilless rifles as its main armament. Now, recoilless rifles in very simple, simple terms is that a gun that lets uh, some of its uh, forward projecting propellant out the back uh, to lessen the blow of the initial firing of the gun and oh my god i'm getting way over my head i know i know but we'll try to keep it nice and simple long story short it would just let gas out the back end of whatever was being fired to lessen the recoil unless recoil means you don't have to have big recoil mechanisms like conventional guns did which was the whole point for the m50 ontos now one thing that we should all be scared of is if War Thunder adds the Swedish round for the M40, the Swedish 1063A that had over 700 millimeters of penetration at 2,000 meters. But I don't think they'll do that. Also, something to note is that um, the M50 Antos has a spotting rifle. The ammunition for the 50 cal spotting rifle is not 50 BMG. The round used is a special round designed to simulate the flight path of the 106 millimeter ammunition. So where the machine gun goes is where the uh, M40 rifle will go. Next up is the IS-6, which is a Soviet heavy tank. Uh, it seems like they haven't done too much work on this tank yet because as they state, uh, they say not in the nearest plans, but may come out. So maybe the next patch or the patch after that. But if I had to sum up the IS-6, it would be Really shitty gun with really good armor. Pretty much like a hybrid between the IS-3 and IS-4, maybe. We'll go with that. Now the next one I can almost confirm for 1.59. This is the TU-4, which is a completely uh, piece for piece reverse engineered of a B-29. However, you should be more scared of the TU-4 than the B-29. Instead of the 50 cals, the TU-4 will use 23 millimeters. Yeah, I just actually dropped my pen I IRL because hearing that shit really spooks me out. The story of how the Russians reverse engineered the B-29 was that like, the B-29 had to like emergency land in like Russian airspace or on a Russian airfield. And America was like, hey, can we have our plane back? And the Russians were like, no comrade, we have, we keep playing, we keep playing, okay? Classic Russian story, duh. We have new heavy tanks being added for the United States. Uh, there's no time scale though. Don't believe it will be this patch at all. However, the T-29 was mentioned in that discussion. Uh, we also have confirmation that the T-62 is coming out. They say work in progress. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be here in 1.59. If not, then very soon after the 1.61 if that's the next patch. Okay, so this is cool. The developers are thinking about adding P-tabs. If you don't know what a P-tab is, it was a Soviet World War II bomb design or a shaped bomb design, and it was a very small bomb. It was about 2.5 kilograms with about 1.5 kilograms worth of explosive. And what would happen is that the IL-2, the primary carrier of the P-tab, would carry about 280 of these things and drop them over enemy tanks. And uh, the shape charge allow the, the P-tab to penetrate 60 to 70 millimeters of tank armor. And you gotta keep in mind, this is top armor. To put it in perspective, the T-54 1951 has 30 millimeters of top armor. So I cannot wait to try out 
uh, a P-tab for myself. And the best part about this Q&A, in my opinion, are the three new anti-aircraft vehicles being added to the game. That is the Shilka, the Japard, and the Vulcan will come out. There's no time date on it, uh, but it's confirmed that these three new anti-aircraft vehicles will be in War Thunder. So a little bit about these three anti-aircraft vehicles. We'll start off with the Shilka. Uh, this one used um, four 23 millimeters at 4,000 rounds a minute. And one little note about this thing is that the guns were water cooled, but sometimes they got so hot that the gun would keep firing or one of the four guns would keep firing even if the operator had his finger off the trigger just because the barrels just got so darn hot that the round inside the chamber would cook off and fire and it would just keep on going and it wouldn't stop. Next up for the Germans is the G-Pard or the G-Pard. Uh, this one fires a, a 35 millimeter shell from an auto cannon and just on first glance, it kind of reminds me of the British Falcon, um, but this one has a five millimeter bigger shell. Uh, just to note, this round goes 400 meters a second faster than the Tiger II's 88 millimeter APC BC round pretty insane but now on to the American anti-aircraft system now I believe the vehicle we're going to be getting for the system or the VADS is the M163 the M163 is just the platform for VADS or Vulcan air defense system the gun is a M61 Vulcan that has six thousand rounds per minute or 6600 with version 2. I'm telling you right now if the Vulcan and the what's the Russian one called the uh, the Shilka get into a engagement one-on-one -on -one, it's it's hashtag rip FPS that is a combination of 10,000 rounds per minute exchanging sides over the battlefield. Uh, thank gosh for those new GTX 1080s coming out because we're gonna need them soon. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video about all the new things that are going to be added into War Thunder in the foreseeable future. Uh, the post that I was talking about today will be linked in the description below for you guys to check out all that information. But guys, do me a favor. Have a great day. And until next time, peace out.